How are you guys doing this morning? Good? As you guys can just notice, Pastor Felipe is in Sao Paulo right now. He's preaching right now in the Cross Bridge in Sao Paulo. And after that, he's going to get a plane. And tonight, he's going to preach in Recife. It's like four hours flying to Sao Paulo, to Recife. He's going to be in our church in Recife. So uh, I know so many of you, I, like, I know, I can't believe I'm going to hear Pastor Gui again. I wish I could hear Pastor Felipe. Anyways. But I know you're not here because Pastor Philip is a nice person, because he's pre- you're here because of Jesus. Amen, church. <laughs> so Jesus can use anybody, even me, you know. So uh, once again, it's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. And we're just going to continue the series that we started uh, five weeks ago, Back to the Basics. And I just want to start just to show this picture to you. Uh, the next one, I don't know if you guys noticed but I'm like, but if someone is losing weight, it's good. If you notice, just say that because I'm like, it's good to hear that, right? So I've been trying so hard. I don't know if anybody noticed that. And you don't have to raise your hand and say, Pastor Gil, look thinner. But listen, it's hard. I became 40 years old like uh, two uh, weeks ago. And my wife says, come on, he's 40. It's like such a special like, moment in your life. You have to do something, you know? So, but I have a problem with my knee, so I was trying to play tennis with Daniel, just give him some lessons. He's really bad, the tennis player. And just uh, do some exercise, but I have a problem with my knee, so I cannot play soccer anymore. So Bruno's like, hey, we have a gym in our building, so just go there and just try to do some exercise. So we have one of those. I don't have been of those. So I was with Bruno there. I just felt really bad because I'm really like, you know, I want to be like with the sport, like I'm really active. I was like, I can't believe I'm just like on the bike right now, indoor. But I just tried to do it because I had a problem with my knee. So Bruno was just trying to explain to me the rhythm, you know, the pain. So I was just trying. She was like, just for like, uh, I think uh, the pace or the, uh, the, the power, like six. So I was like, okay, she was six. I'm going to put 12. So I started to do like, and the idea was to have like uh, be there for half an hour. So, and, and I did, you know, half an hour. Bruno just like for 10 minutes, just for warm up. And after she went to other things. The next day I was like, come on. It's just like, it's not enough, so I'm going to try to do an hour. So I just put an hour, 12, and I started to do it. Guess what? After an hour, bro, I was so wet, you know. And I was so happy as well. So I can't believe I did. The next day I had a problem. When I got on my bike, there was two of those in my gym, in our building there. And there was this guy, actually, this man, about like 85, 90 years old. And I just got there, and he was using the speed of 17. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm a very, like, competitive guy, you know. So I got there, I said, come on, if this guy is using 17, I was like, 18. <laughs> Good morning, how you doing, man? And guess what? He started before me. In less than 20 minutes, I promise you, I just got up. I said, no, I'm just warming up, so God bless you, and just I'm going to do some stuff. I couldn't finish. I was, I was so embarrassed. And the reason actually was that happened is just because I wasn't prepared. I mean, like, sometimes in our life we're just trying to do some stuff that we know that we're not prepared. And we have to, and we, we start to compare ourselves to somebody else. And so many times we just lose whatever God has for us because we stop to look to the Lord and start to look just around us. This, this, this episode that we're going we're gonna to talk this morning called No Need to Shift Gears. We just start to talk about uh, Paul and his letters and the letter of the Galatians specifically. And last week, we just tried to understand why did Paul wrote that letter. And Paul is this guy on chapter 9 of Acts. He finds Jesus in the road of Damascus, and Jesus was resurrected. He says, you say, Paul, why are, you, why are you doing whatever you're doing with my followers? You're killing them. You're arresting them. So we stopped. So he became a Christian in that moment, and he wanted to spread the gospel all over the place. He just noticed that he was doing something that wasn't good. So he started to preach the gospel not just for the Jewish, his people, but all over the place, for the Gentiles as well. So Paul, we just spoke about this last week on the Acts 13. He's going to start to do the missionary trip. And whatever Paul was preaching the gospel, he always has this goal. I'm going to just tell them about the good news, the gospel. Jesus Christ died in our place. And the way he was approaching was two ways. The first of all, he would like try to encourage them to say, hey, sometimes you're going to face a really hard time. And the other way, they're going to be like a letter of exhortation. To say, hey, what you guys are doing? And now we're in the chapter 3, and this is for sure the most famous like, uh, chapter on the letter of Galatians. Because it's actually how the Paul is very clear. Sometimes, you know, you say to your kids, hey, go to the shower, go shower, go shower. 
And there was a moment to say, what are you doing? I told you already five times. Some parents are going to say, I told you a hundred times. What you guys are doing? So you have to exhort, you have to raise your voice. And it seems like the chapter three, Paul is like raising his voice. It's, what are you guys doing? I'm trying to explain to you guys that you have a problem. So we're going to read verse by verse to try to understand what actually Paul wants to do on the chapter three. And he starts like this. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before our very eyes, Jesus Christ was clear, portrayed, and crucified. Wow. Uh, we have to understand here that Paul, he was defending his teaching, the doctrine of the gospel, the grace. And first of all, he was trying to literally like fight against the Jewish that were there in that church and that tried to Judaizer the Gentiles. Let me explain to you. All the letters that we have that Paul wrote, he was there, he planted the church, and after he was traveling to another place, another place, and after like a, sometimes like two or three years, he would hear some feedbacks of that church. So that church started really well. They understood the gospel, the grace, the mercy, they're saved by grace through faith. And now there was some Jews inside of the community that say, hey, hey, Paul is a nice guy. Jesus is amazing, but listen to me. It's not that simple to be saved. You're going to have to be very careful the things that you do or you don't do so you have to be circumcised. You have to be careful the things that you eat. You have to be very careful about the sabbatic, that the, the Saturday was a holy day. So now they're saying, you are saved, but not just by grace. You have to do some stuff. And actually, Paul is trying to do like chapter 1 and 2. Be very nice, guys. Open your eyes. Not like this. By grace. You don't have to do anything. Just receive. You start really well. But now in this section, Paul is going to go, hey, you guys are foolish. I don't know about you, but I don't like when somebody calls me foolish. Foolish means literally without understanding. Uh, so Paul was saying, you guys are not thinking. You're not really using your brains. What you guys are doing? You started very well. Three years ago I was here. You guys raised your hand, put your heart to Jesus. And now you're just trying to look at somebody else. Why you guys are doing this? You guys are foolish. And it's really interesting, that word foolish, because really it means like a without understanding. And I'm telling you one thing. Do you know who used the same word to talk to somebody? Jesus. This is Luke chapter 24. I want to read the verse because it's really important for us to understand. You know the Old Testament was right in ribbon, ribbon uh, and the New Testament was all right in Greek. We call Greek koine. And there are some words that are really special. The meanings of that word talks a lot about actually what we can do or not. So Jesus, he was on the Sunday like this. And actually, by the way, you know, in two uh, weekends we're going to have Easter. It's going to be a really special moment here as a church that we celebrate. The reason actually we're here every single Sunday morning is because Sunday is a day that we know that Jesus was raised from the dead. And the Sunday just happened. And that history we're going to read right now happened on the first Sunday. So on the morning, remember, the woman was there trying to figure out how they're going to take care of the body of Jesus. And they couldn't find because he was raised. And now he's walking. So I want to read this story because it's really beautiful. This is chapter 24 and in verse 17 of the Gospel of Luke. This is the word of the Lord. He, and this is Jesus, asked them, what you guys are discussing together as you walk along? They're going to a place called Emmaus. This city was like seven miles from Jerusalem. So they're all there, and they're really sad. And so Jesus appeared to them. So it's Jesus with two disciples. They're discussing. They're really sad. Hey, they stood with still their face downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visit to Jerusalem who doesn't know what things that happened there in these days? What things? He asked about Jesus of Nazareth, he replied, he was a prophet, power in words and deed before God and all the people. The chief of priests and our rulers, he was over and sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But he had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since everything took place. In addition, some of the women raised us. They went to the tomb early this morning. But did not found his body. They came, uh, they came and told us they had seen in the vision of angels, and he said he was alive. Then some of their com companions went to the tomb and found it was just the woman said, 
but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how, what? Foolish you are. And how slow to believe all that the prophet had spoke. Did not the Messiah have to suffer those things? And they entered into his glory and began with Moses and the prophets and explained to them all he said, all these scriptures concerning about himself. This is amazing. So can you just think about here? And Jesus was there, and they just found these two guys face down, really sad. And he used the same word. You guys are foolish. But now that word means something else. It's not just, not just without understanding, but it's doom in perception and delay in feelings. This is amazing. Why, first of all, why those guys are so sad? They're really sad because they expected, as a, as a Jewish, a military intervention against the Roman Empire. If you ask back then, hey, what is salvation for you? They would say, because there were so many prophets in the Old Testament, hey, the king is going to come, he's going to reign everything. So they used to pay like more than 70%, 75% of tax to the Roman Empire. Everyone used to hate Rome. But they had the power. They have everything. If, you don't, if you're not happy, you're going to die. If you, if you disagree, well, you know it's gonna be, you're going to be in jail. So those guys, they had on his heart, their heart, what the salvation for them would be, hey, it's going to be an intervention here. The angels are going to come, and they're going to just like turn Rome down. And you say, this is crazy, but it's not. For you as well, if I ask you, what is salvation for you? Oh, of course, as a, as a Christian, you guys in the church right now, you're probably going to say it's Jesus. But be real. Because everyone here has a point of maybe salvation for you is something else. Maybe salvation for you right now is to say, Pastor, is, uh, my mom is really sick, you know. Uh, somebody has cancer in your, in, your, in your house. And I'm not saying you cannot pray for that. Maybe salvation for you is like, hey, I'm not going to ask anything else, Lord. Just like make this marriage happen again. My wedding is not good. Maybe salvation for you is to have your son that is really far from God. I don't know. But everyone here has a kind of expectation of salvation. And they had as well. But listen to me. When we say that actually they are delayed in doing perception, what Jesus was saying, hey, you guys cannot even like notice I'm here. Can you imagine this? They worked for like two hours and then didn't realize that that was Jesus until the end of the story. Do you know why that happened? Guys, they in front of the resurrected Jesus, they cannot even advance or for one reason. So many times, we're not gonna, we're not gonna ask where Jesus is, where we're gonna ask, hey, hey, I think Jesus just left me alone. I don't know if you guys, just be honest here. If you're not, I am. Sometimes when you pray, it just seems like you're praying for nothing or nobody's listening to you. Have you ever felt this in your heart? I'm not sure if Jesus actually is listening to me. Because there's so many things happening. I mean, like, uh, I'm trying to reach to him. I'm like, I, I don't have any signs. What's happening here? And the reason that sometimes we cannot see Jesus or walk or just notice that he's here is because sometimes time does not always coincide with the chronologic of the soul. I'm going to repeat this, okay? I think we have the slides there. Time does not always coincide with the chronologic of the soul. The story is already taking place on the Sunday afternoon. Do you know what's happening? But their souls was stuck on the Friday of crucifixion. Guys, their soul was overdue. They are kept on suffering. They are on Sunday afternoon now. And their hearts were what? On the Friday, they saw Jesus being crucified. And there were some times in our lives that I was so often lags behind God's step in our history. We are here, but your soul, this is Sunday. You are alive. If you are here, you are blessed. But your soul is back. Something happened to you so long ago. You were captive of suffering, so you're always like on the lack. So you're supposed to be here, but you're just like so far away. Because you delay in perception. When Jesus said, you guys are foolish, listen. You guys are crying. You guys actually are suffering. You guys are crying. Let, let me know one thing. 
Your heart is back on Thursday or Friday, but I have good news for you. Today is Sunday. I am alive. There is a new thing for you. There is a new expectation that God just brings to you so you can live in a different way. So Jesus say, hey, I have good news for you. But many of us are stuck on Friday. And we cannot sometimes, guys, just perceive and feel God because we want to see him in our way. Listen, God is always there. God is always with you. The problem is so many times we cannot see it. Why? Because we have some expectation in our heart. And we think this is actually the way I want God to show him for myself. And it's real. If you never felt that, you're going to feel that. You're going to feel alone sometimes. But I can tell you one thing, guys. God is with you. The problem is you want to see God in your way. And he's, gonna, he's not going to show in the, your, his way. He's going to show in his way, not your way. And when I say this, I, I can tell you so many stories. And I always remember because Pastor Philippe is back in Brazil. So we had a meeting this week, like more than four hours, talking about what's going to happen there. He's going to preach. He's going to preach today, tonight in, my, in, our, in our church back in Brazil. He's going to have a meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, and you guys, I don't know how many of you guys know my story, but I came here. Uh, for spend a sabbatical, right? So I, was, I had a burnout back in Brazil. I was really tired, and the church was really nice. They say, hey, we need a pastor here. So uh, they just sh- sent me some picture of Kibis Kane, so they got my heart, like, right away, you know? So they said, hey, Guy, this is a place you can just, like, rest and can help uh, us as well. We are experienced in the church as well. So I said, hey, let's go. And I was supposed to go back to Brazil, like, uh, I think a, a month and a half ago. The, pl- the first plan was, to, was going to be, like, eight months. We already had a stand for the end of this year. So because we love this place and you just feel like God actually is doing some stuff like through our family. But it has not been very easy. There are so many times in our lives here that we just like ask ourselves, what is God in this? And I remember like the last time that I preached in Brazil, the last sermon that I preached in Brazil was a Sunday. And I just said this, listen, I need to stop and I want to hear the voice. I want to hear the Lord speaking to me. And you know what I have on my mind, had in my mind? I saw the picture of the beach here, you know. And my friend Pierre just found a really nice apartment just by the beach. So I'm going to go to the beach every single day in the morning. I'm going to see the birds, you know. I'm going to just listen to the Holy Spirit to speak to me. That, that was the idea that I pictured in my heart and my mind. We got here. I don't know if you guys remember, the second day, we went to Bill Bags. This is a new, this is a new nice park. And I had, didn't, know, didn't know how to, how to pay to get there. We got there. So excited. No problem. Six dollars. Let's see this. I know there's a lighthouse there. The first thing, I just throw like a frisbee to my wife. She jumped to his, her uh, uncle. The next month, I had to have a, something on my TV. Because I can't believe this happened right here. I had to do a root canal in Key Biscayne. I sold my house back in Brazil, my car, everything to pay the thing here. And I remember the, la- the, the next month, my daughter started not to feel very well. She had some fever. She came to school. You guys remember? And there was a day, it was me and my wife and my daughter in the ICU. And I'm not exaggerating. It was the night that I, we thought that she was going to die. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You would give your life to your daughter, right? To your son, you would do. And on my heart, I was like, Jesus, where are you? When I said to you three months ago that I was tired, I was, I was supposed to be resting, you know? But where are you right now? And I remember that night, Esther was there. I just hold my wife's hand, we just had to cry and pray. And I remember the last time that I preached in Brazil, I said, I want to have a special experience with the Holy Spirit. But I didn't have that on mind. But I can tell you right now, that was the strongest experience that I had on my whole life with Jesus. And you can ask yourself, what is Jesus? What is Jesus? We were there. And sometimes some of our friends of us just come there just to give a hug, 
to bring some food. I remember Maureen, she's just like a translator right now. She just brought some Mediterranean food. I remember Andrea and Paula just going there. I spent so much, so much time, so many of you. Could I ask what is Jesus? You guys. Jesus was acting through the people. What is Jesus? He's with you, with your kids, with the food in your table that you don't even say thank you before you eat because it's normal. No. Everything that we have is by grace. But we just foolish. We ask ourselves, what is Jesus? We cannot see Jesus. There are so many ways that he can show you. He's showing you, I love you. I'm taking care of you. Guys, do you know how did they notice that disciples, that Jesus was Jesus? He spoke the Old, Old Testament to those guys. That, that lesson was, I think, when I get in heaven, I'm going to say, Jesus, can you just like repeat whatever you said to the disciples? Because he started with Moses, all the prophets, to introduce himself. What a lesson, what theology lesson. I want to hear when I get in heaven. So they didn't notice that Jesus was Jesus until it was like getting late. On the afternoon, they said, Hey, can you just come in? Welcome to our house. We're gonna share the bread, we're gonna eat some stuff. And they just sat with Jesus. And the word of the Lord said that when they shared, when he broke the bread, their eyes were open. And they just noticed, Ah, it's Jesus. He was there all the time. But you didn't notice. This is the picture of my desk. And I know it's a mess to say, can you use a computer, Pastor Guy? <laughs> Telling you, it's quite an old computer. And I was going to just take them out, but I, it's, it has a really important thing for me, you know, because every single day I look at that screen. Can you just go another picture, please, Maria? And that, that one I'm going to explain to you. Maybe you just ask, what is that? Can you just pass another one, Maria? So... The reason I have this is because my daughter, she studies here in the school, and every single day after school, normally she goes to my office, and she loves to drive and just like leave a message on the post-it, so I just put there. And that one really interested me, you know, I, I said, Esther, that was like right after she got out of the, the, the hospital. So she came back to school like uh, three weeks after, and she wrote that and just put that. Says, Can you explain to me what's that? She was like, Dad, this is me on the bed in the hospital. And this is the angel. What do you mean, the angel? She went, what do you mean, Dad? Every single day, I could see the angel taking care of me on that room. And as a pastor, I was asking myself, where is Jesus? <laughs> Jesus was... Using so many people to say, hey, I take care of you. I love you. So before you say, hey, I think Jesus just completely forgot me. Don't say that. There is so many ways that he's just trying to show him to yourself. You have a beautiful family. If you are here, you can say this. You are blessed. The sun just rises this morning. So his mercy is up in you, in your family. His grace is in your house. You have a food to eat. You have everything that you need. You have clothes. So thanks the Lord every single day because we are blessed. We are not foolish anymore. Amen, church. Lastly, we see some dates in our calendar, and it just seems to be like, okay, this is a special moment. For example, Christmas. Easter is going to be like in two weeks. Do you know our history? Is the history of Easter? Because on Thursday, somebody in our life is going to betray you sometimes. On Friday, in some Fridays, you're going to face death. Somebody that you're going to love so much is going to die. I don't know. On Saturday... It's those days are so hard that you ask yourself, what, what is Jesus? What's happened to my life? Nothing is happening. But guess what? We have a good news. And this is why we say the gospel means good news. Guys, the Sunday is here. The Sunday is here. 
I have good news. Please, just think about this. Just leave the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday, and you start to celebrate because Jesus always gives you a new chance. He is alive. And this is really want to the church of the Galatians to understand. Guys, listen to me. You are trying, you start really well. But now you guys are trying to, to just get the salvation by something. You guys are not just foolish. But you ask them, who has bewitched you? Who did that to you? Who has attracted you? You start really well. Why are you guys doing this way? Who is the one actually, who is the one you, you, you're targeting? Is the one actually you're going for? Because when we start to look around, we just lose. That was the, actually what happened to me on the gym this week. I was really good. I had my faith. But wherever somebody just got on my side, and it's not something that I wasn't supposed to do. I just lost, I lost my focus. And I couldn't complete. Our focus has to be Jesus. Our focus has to be Jesus. Who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes was Christ and clearly portrayed crucified. We'd like to learn one thing from you. Did you receive the spirit of the works of the Lord or by the believing what you heard? Are you foolish after being mean in spirit, now you're trying to finish by some means of the flesh. Have you experienced so much in vain? If you haven't. It's nice, this question, actually, he asked them. Just tell me, who has attracted you? Who has bewitched you? There is this uh, concept of this uh, French philosopher called René Jihad. I don't know if you guys heard about this guy. Uh, this guy just came with this... Uh, concept called mimetic desire. And it's really interesting. And basically what he's going to say that, he's going to suggest that everything that we desire is something because somebody else desired that thing. So what he's going to say, we desire for imitation. So whatever you say, no, 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 I, I desire because I desire. No, you des what he's going to say, we desire for imitation. I can, I, I can prove that to you, okay? If you ask a teenager in Key Biscayne, and of course we have this band with the e-bikes, but if you're going to ask your son, hey, I want to give you an e-bike, what brand they're going to say is this one here? They're going to say the Super 73. I have been talking to some friends that are going to say, hey, Pastor, I just don't know. I mean, like, there are some other ones that are really cheaper, than one, but they want the 73. Why they want the 73? Because the desire for imitation. I, I was just having fun with my, my family. We went to a, 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 a they, they love, the kids love the, the five below, and I love the, the, Dollar three, <laughs> that is good, man. So, and my, my daughter, she, she's amazing, you know, and she, I, I think she really has Jesus in her heart, but she's a, she's a sinner. So I was with my boy, and she said, hey, just pick two things, $10 with the tax, I'm going to spend $11. So my daughter was with my wife, and certainly I just called, hey, I'm just here in the five below, I just, what did you get? And she got the phone, what did you get for Luca? I know, just two things. What do you think that she said to me? Oh, Dad, I'm so happy that you got something for Luca. He really deserved? Or you think that she said, how many things you gave to him? Because I need two things as well. We desire for imitation. This is life. And this is really complicated because what Paul is saying to the church of the Galatians is this. You guys start really well. But now you're trying to do by yourself. Why? Because you start to look at Jewish. And they start to influence you. Who is influencing your life? Why are you living your life like this? Who has bewitched you? You guys are crazy. You start really well. And now you're just like comparing yourself. And I always say this. Comparison. You always obscure God's calling to your life. Comparison. We obscure God's calling in your life. Guys. Be 100% honest with you here. For me, it's not easy to be here and preach in another language. It's really hard. I used to preach six times on Sunday. We have six services in our church back in Brazil. And you know what happened to my heart? I, I'm not going to do that good. My English is not that good. I, I'm going to unwrap the, the word of the Lord. And there is so many voices coming to my mind and my heart when I come here. But I have to pray and say, nobody's going to define who I am. Jesus will do. So I'm going to preach the gospel. 
and just let the Holy Spirit do the work. So I, I, I would try to do my best here. But when I try, I try to compare with my English with Pastor Felipe or other preachers, you know what? I got sad. But I learned one thing. I'm never going to be Pastor Felipe. Pastor Felipe is never going to be me. I'm never going to be the best pastor in this speech, the whole world, but they're never going to be me. Every one of us has a mission that God puts in your heart. So you stop comparing to somebody else. God wants to use you the way that you are for his glory, not for your name and not for your glory. So you stop to look around. Our target has to be the cross. Our point of reference has to be the cross. Our target is Jesus. And we start to live the way actually he wants for us. Amen, church. Lastly, so Abraham believed in God and he was credited in him in righteousness. Understand that those who have faith in children of Abraham, it's scripture for so that God would justify the child by faith and announce the gospel in advance of Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who really on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. What Paul was saying, guys, was this. Even Abraham, the man or the father of the faith, he was justified not by the things actually he could do or he did. He was saved by grace. Paul is going to write another letter in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. And he's going to say this. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith. You know what is faith? It's believing. Maybe we're going to face really hard times to believe in some things. But what Paul is saying, listen to me, guys. Even Abraham, the guy you guys use for the Lord, for the Torah, that guy is really special for the theology in the Old Testament. Even Abraham, he wasn't saved because of the things he could do. No, no, he was saved by grace, through faith, faith. So I end with this story. Uh, maybe everyone know you guys know I have two kids, right? Luke and Esther. And I think one of the most beautiful thing about Kibis Kane, they're really into sports. You know, my boy is really good in soccer. And my girl just started with the gymnastic. And after they started to play, you know, I came to, to them and I always say, hey, you guys are amazing. You're so good. And the second class of my daughter, she, she, was, she wasn't that good, right? She, she started to improve. And I told her, you are the best gymnastic on the whole planet. Guess what she said to me? I know that. <laughs> and I asked her, why, why, how, how do you know? You know what she said? Because you tell me this every single day. God loves you. Stop pretending something. You accept not by the things that you do, but in Jesus Christ. Let's pray.